Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm your District 8 Director, Terry Fender. Our first three uh, virtual workshops uh, were, uh, were uh, handled by three judges out on, the east, out on the West Coast in California. Today we're coming a little bit back toward the east side. We have the husband and wife combo of Doug and Molly Covert out of Michigan. And we're very appreciative of them for helping out today. Uh, if you'll listen to Doug and Molly, they've got some good information on Brittany Petites. Uh, once they're done, they'll come back to me and we'll have some closing remarks. So with that, take it away, Doug and Molly. Thank you. Oh, good morning. Good morning. We're coming to you from Michigan. Um, Doug and I have been uh, all breed rabbit judges for, I want to say I've been 25 and Doug is 23 years. Um, we've had Britannia Petites in our barn for about nine years now. Um, and it's a breed that we really enjoy uh, sharing with other people. It, it, it has some quirks and it's not for everybody. But um, as far as youth judging, um, there's some good tips and tricks that I'm going to share with you today. Um, I have a slideshow that we're going to go through and, and touch on some of the basics. When I asked Terry what you all might be interested in the most, he had said um, the, the type and bone and handling. So we're going to try and go through most of those with you today. We'll go through the slideshow and then um, Terry will field some questions and I have a rabbit here that I can um, work with and if you have any specific questions I can go through and, and show you what, what we do here. So that being said we'll go ahead and start. Um, Amanda's going to move to the next slide here. Okay. I just wanted to outline what I was going to cover. We'll talk a little bit about type handling, and then at the very end, I'll give you some tips and tricks that we would uh, share with our uh, youth that we would coach for judging contests. Next, please. So what defines a Britannia Petite? Um, the first and foremost thing is it's a full arch body style. Um, I also want to say all the bunnies in this presentation are our rabbits, so if you have questions about specific animals or you want to critique, we welcome that. We're not offended at all, but these are all photos that we took here. Um, so that full arch body style is, is of utmost importance, obviously. And then the next most important thing, in my opinion, is the bone. So those two things combined, in my opinion, are what makes a petite a petite. Um, they're also supposed to be rather fit and slender, which I think is unusual as rabbits go. Most rabbits I don't consider to be fit. Um, they, they're in good condition, but petites really are rather muscular, and because they don't carry a lot of fat on their frame, they're quite fit and slender. They're also described as being sprightly or alert, um, and that does not mean aggressive. Um, alert is a good thing. We like them to be um, very up on their toes, their eyes open wide and bright, and um, sprightly, I think, refers to the fact that they do tend to move quite a bit, and when they move, they move quickly. Um, they're also the only posed full arched breed. Next slide, please. Um, in talking about uh, the bone, um, petites are to be petite, and, and I, I like this photo of this um, doe. Um, she just, to me, everything about her is very fine, um, and that refine, refers to her bone, um, her ears, her body shape, um, her legs. Um, and one thing that goes along with bone, and this refers to all breeds of rabbits, the heavier the bone, Generally, the thicker the ears, the larger the head, and the longer the fur. So the finer that you get bone, the thinner the ears become, the more refined the legs become, the more slender. The more fine the fur becomes, the actual diameter of the coat, the fur, each hair is very fine. So we want that really fine fur so it lays smoothly on the body of the rabbit, so what is demonstrated on this doe here. Um, so we want their, their front legs to be straight. We want them right up on their tiptoes, and this doe is showing you exactly what I want to see um, from a front leg on a petite. Um, everything that, that is in um, parentheses, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, 
parentheses or um, quotation. I'm sorry, quotation marks. That's what I meant. Thank you. Um, are my my interpretations? The other things are right out of the standard. So I want to see them up on their tiptoes. I want to see toes, not hooves. In another slide, well, I'll demonstrate what this actually means. I also want the rabbit to be elegant. Um, that is not used in the standard, but to me, they're like porcelain. They're they're very elegant um, when everything is put together properly. And then one of the best bits of advice that I got when I first started with petites um, from one of my mentors was that the proper body shape actually looks like a lowercase h. Um, next slide, please. Okay, this is kind of demonstrates the lowercase h concept. It's the same rabbit in the, from the previous slide. Um, if you look at her top line, I drew a plumb line from the tip of her ears down to her eye and chest and leg. And then I used an arc to follow her top line. That's your lowercase h. The arc on the inside of that follows her underside. It doesn't have to exactly reflect the top line but a rabbit that is really tucked up and shows daylight, that's a word, a term used in the standard, it is really desirable. And when you have a rabbit where those two lines are really similar, those two arcs, um, that's a beautiful thing. And I happen to love this doe's underline. It's just, again, it's, it's a really elegant thing. Next slide, please. Okay, this is my hooves and feet um, <laughs> crew drawing. I couldn't get this done with PowerPoint, so I drew it and took a picture. So um, a petite's feet and legs are to be fine bone, straight and slender. So the first drawing there is those pencil legs, nice and straight, nice and fine. And I believe and describe to my uh, kids that are judging that petite have very, they have feet, they have toes, slender feet. And that's what you see on the very left there that says yes. The middle one <laughs> is everything you don't want. Um, that's a heavier boned rabbit. And instead of having those little elegant toes, you have what I call paws or hooves. My mentor called them hooves. Um, I think it's really interesting and I tried to get a photo but it didn't work out to compare a dwarf's feet to a petite's feet. And petites have feet and dwarfs have these big paws that come right at you. So that's what I'm demonstrating in that middle picture with the heavier bone. With the heavier bone, you're gonna get those paws or hooves, just like you would on a holland lap, you're gonna get the paws. Um, we don't want that in a petite, we want feet. And then on the far right, um, that is demonstrating weak ankles. It's a fault, don't get all crazy about it if you see it, it's not worth 90 points. But um, it's actually a phenomenon that happens in the breed when the bone starts to get too fine. So as breeders, we walk this very fine line of trying to keep the legs the correct bone while also keeping them straight. So the next slide, please. Okay, this is um, talking a little bit about the head. And uh, I oftentimes feel that judging rabbits is, it's, it's, a, it's a mix of geometry and spatial re relations. So understanding balance um, is oftentimes, it, it's related to, to geometry. I took this picture of this guy. If you look at the actual position of the head, he's, I'm not looking at his head from the side directly. He's actually on an angle kind of looking toward me. So I wanted to, this photo um, to sort of dis, to uh, demonstrate the concavity that we see between the eyes sometimes. But let me start at the very top here and uh, with the head. And the head is supposed to be wedge-shaped, um, and that is in the standard. Um, with, when you are looking straight down on the head with its nose facing your belly, there should be a wedge there, and the most broad portion should be at the base of the ears, and then it comes into a nice uh, nose. Um, the next uh, equilateral triangle, I believe I use that um, when I'm trying to teach or judge. Um, when you look at the side of the head, that's an equilateral triangle from the base of the ears to the base of the neck to the muzzle. You can also use that equilateral triangle, and I just couldn't quite get it with PowerPoint. 
on the front of the head um, from the base of each ear following down to the snout. Um, and going back to the brows in between um, this rabbit's eyes, you can just see the bump right below the whiskers or her um, eyelashes on the far side. So if you look, you'll see that divot between her eyes and that's a very desirable trait. Um, it gives the appearance of a bolder eye. Um, some people liken it to an alligator. If you look at an alligator where their eyes are on either side of their head, they have this divot, um, this concavity right between their eyes. The ears are supposed to be uh, erect and touching all the way up. This is not a good example of touching all the way up. Um, but oftentimes with petites, um, they are very visual and they, you have the camera and they're looking at what you're doing. And, and I didn't pet the back of this rabbit's ears in order to get the, the ears to touch all the way up. Um, a strong ear base is also very important. And again, going back to walking that fine line as a breeder, um, of fine bone and not too heavy a bone. Um, with really, really fine boned rabbits, you oftentimes will have the ears um, that tend to be too thin. They also tend to uh, have a flange at the top and scissor occasionally. Also with really super fine bone, they will be slipped off the back of the head. So we want to have a little more bone. We don't want ultra fine because we want those ears up on the head at 12 o'clock. This rabbit shows a really pretty 12 o'clock um, ear set. Um, also, when you have a little more bone, you get a, a really, the ears are just planted on the top of the head with the right bone. And also, if the rabbit is really, really fine boned, nine times out of 10, their ears are pink um, because with a, a super fine boned animal, and you'll see this in all breeds of rabbits, the finer the bone, like on a Florida white, the finer the bone, the thinner the ear, the thinner the hair on the ear. Well, in our petites, yes, we want really fine bone, but we don't want pink ears. Or oh, I'm sorry. For, for white rabbits. For, yes, on the white rabbits, I'm sorry. Um, so we do want to see some furring, no pink. And, and when the ears are touching, when you're looking at them from the front, yes, I want to see a nice round ear there as well. The eyes, there are a lot of points, guys. There are 15 points. That's a chunk of change when it comes to eyeballs. <laughs> and they are supposed to be bright and really bold. And in my opinion, what defines a bold eye is two things. They have to be round and they have to be large. And the way to kind of control some of your eye is by controlling the shape of your head. I think it's next to impossible to breed for jumbo, jumbo eyeballs but I can absolutely, we can manipulate the shape of the head in order to encourage that divot between the eyes to give the appearance that the eyes are bolder. Manipulating it through our breeding program sorry, yeah. and through <laughs> the selection of the proper head size and yes, shape. Yes, yes. To get yep. that eye to pop out. Correct, thank you. Yep. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the last 30 points out of this, the 100. Um, it's coat, color, and condition. And these are three things um, that are just, it, they're crucial towards winning Best in Show. Um, and if you are judging and you're struggling between first and second, that, that color, that condition, and that coat, the condition primarily, is what is gonna be the icing on the cake and will oftentimes put the judge over the top and that will help you place an animal in first over second. Um, it's, it's the bonus points, the condition points, and it's condition of coat and it's condition of flesh. And petites should feel good, you guys. They should not be bony. They, they should be really smooth, really hard. Um, that coat um, should be sleek and set tightly in the, in the pelt. Um, but these are just really important points and, and they shouldn't be thrown away because when you combine them, that's a third of the rabbit. Next slide, please. This is my fur matters. Um, and this will touch on things that we already did. Obviously, we want the fur to be fine. It should be flyback fur. Um, we dropped a word in, in the standard a while ago that I, I kind of missed because I think it really um, describes petite fur. And we used to call petite fur snappy flyback. 
And it is. When it is the right length, the right density, and you are petting it backwards, it is one of the most luxurious, luxurious furs, I think, in the rabbit kingdom. It, there's nothing else like it. Um, again, if your rabbits are getting too fine in bone, oftentimes you lose some of that density. And that density is what makes it so luxurious. And again, we want it fine and shorter so that it shows off the body style. If you get this longer fur on the rabbit with a heavier, coarser boned animal, the fur doesn't lay down. Um, it, it doesn't show that sleek look, the smooth look that we're really looking for. Uh, that, next slide, please. Okay, um, the next section is just a few pictures here, and we can talk more at the end. If you all have questions about handling, I, can, I have a rabbit that I can short, sh show you a little bit about um, how we use the different techniques in handling. Next slide, please. For some reason, Reason, you know, petites can be very intimidating, and I've worked really hard to try and, and encourage hands-on with this breed. Um, there are a couple different ways in the standard um, that we would like to see you use to handle a petite. The first one's called a shoulder lift, the second one's called a chin lift, and the third one has been pulled out of the standard, but I think can be really helpful, and it's um, called the praying hands technique. And I think it's one of those things that you can just kind of put in your toolbox of handling. Um, and I think it can also work with Hollands and some other breeds. Um, and I have a picture of it, but I think these three different things are, will be helpful in, in educating you in how to handle this breed. Next slide, please. Oh, well, there's my praying hands. <laughs> Next slide, okay. Um, the shoulder lift. Um, most petites, if they're structured properly with a little bit of um, training, will readily pose with you um, using your hands just behind the shoulders and lifting the front end of the rabbit up. Um, what I think is really important to keep in mind, um, with petites especially, is that you're working really hard to get the rabbit to put its weight onto its hindquarters while lifting and lightening the forehand. So by getting the rabbit to sit back, it will get the top line to pop out and it will get the front line, I'm sorry, front end to raise up and let the rabbit stand on its tippy toes. Um, sometimes the rabbits will scoot away from you. This oftentimes with juniors is a challenge. Um, and I think using the judging coop is really helpful when you are trying to pose a petite because they are oftentimes trying to back away from you. And if you use that judging coop, all of a sudden his rear end has bumped right into the coop. Another thing that's a little challenging about posing petites versus other breeds of rabbits is oftentimes we're posing them facing us. And that's a really awkward thing to do when we're so used to posing rabbits either to the left or to the right. So sometimes containing that rabbit and, and up against that uh, judging coop can be a really helpful technique. Um, next slide, please. I also feel like the shoulder lift um, is a really, it's great for the older rabbits, the seniors. Um, most of them are comfortable with that. It can be a challenge with the juniors. So I think the chin lift and the praying hands can be really helpful with the junior classes. So this is a photo of me using a chin lift. And I have put my fingers behind the head of the rabbit and my thumb under the chin. It's not on the neck, it's on the chin. So you're kind of encouraging the rabbit to sit back and lift up. And then my left hand there is kind of blocking the rabbit from moving to the side. Um, so a chin lift, keep it in mind for um, the young rabbits, and if the rabbit is being really snappish, don't do it. <laughs> but I find 99% of the time, the rabbits have no trouble with this once they know what you want. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the praying hands um, technique. This also works pretty well with the little guys. Um, 
Some people worry about their risks um, with this technique. And to be perfectly honest, with my rabbits, I've never been bitten doing this. Um, but I also kind of understand them. <laughs> so I know when they're upset. And one of the things with judging and handling petites, you guys, they're like small children, okay? Their attention spans are really short and you don't ever want to leave them unattended. <laughs> don't pose a petite and walk away. Don't, it'll be gone. And the last thing, just like little children, some of them bite. So <laughs> you, have to, you have to kind of learn, you know, where to keep your hands. And if somebody is being aggressive, put them away and come back later. And they usually give you a nibble warning before they go they all biting. Yep. And petites, I mean, I've judged Doug and I both a bazillion rabbits. And petites, um, they're very alert. They're very visual. And they, when they bite, they bite and release. It's, it's, I've never had a petite bite me and hang on like I've had a mini lop or other breeds of rabbits that bite and don't let go. Petites just get ticked off and they want to be left alone. So it's generally a warning. Some are aggressive, you guys. I'm not going to say they aren't, but. But um, the breed has gotten much better. It is so much better. The breeders have done a very good job of sorting out aggression. And now we just have alert rabbits and we've annoyed them to the point where they might nip at you. They're more patient, yep. But For the most patient. part, I mean, I when I got started with this breed, I learned right away in our breeding program that the rabbits were not going to show well if the judge was afraid of them. So if you can master their energy, you compose them. That's, that's key with this breed, in my opinion. Next slide, please. Okay, some of these things that we've already talked about a little bit, but when you're handling them, you need to be fearless. When you pull them out of their holding coop, have a good hold, pull them out. Um, you should be just fine. Just, yep, be firm with them. Uh, you also need to be patient with this breed. It's not a fast breed, you guys. I can't tell you how many judges um, at national shows are. Our breed at nationals is going to be in that 200 to 250 animal range. And for most judges, for us to judge that many rabbits in an afternoon or a, a show is, is a good day. To judge 250 petites in a day is a mental and physical workout. So I think if you pull petites as a judging class, you need to realize it's going to take a little bit of time. So just be patient. Go into it knowing it's not going to be, be fast. Um, when you pose the rabbits, regardless of the technique that you choose to use, just like any other breed, the feet need to go in all four corners, guys. We don't want you pushing the feet up between the front legs. It makes their rear ends look horrid. Um, we want them light on the forehand hand and heavy on the hindquarters. And you really, it's almost impossible to get a petite posed too tall. Um, you don't want its feet off the ground, obviously, but you can really encourage that rabbit to get taller and taller and taller. And, and the taller they become, the more beautiful their top line becomes. So try to get the most out of every rabbit that you're handling. Um, keep your hands off the face. Um, if you get handsy on their face, you're gonna get bit. Um, they don't appreciate that at, all, that at all. It doesn't mean you can't use your hands to kind of block the rabbit from jumping or moving. But if you get down on that face with your hands, you will probably get bit. Um, and, and the last thing, and this is also tough for all judges, not just new judges or not just new, you know, kids learning to judge this breed, you have to assess them quickly. They're not going to sit on that table for five minutes while you figure it out. Um, you really need to, to look at them rather quickly. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Um, just a little bit on their behavior. Um, they are very visual. We've raised a handful of breeds here and petites by far are taking it all in. If you walk down through the aisles at a convention where the petites are, the, it's rather fascinating to, to watch them um, watch you. 
Of the few breeds that we've raised, I also believe they're one of the most intelligent breeds of rabbits. They catch on very quickly. Um, once they figure out what a show is and what they're supposed to do, um, they love to be appreciated. And that is, a, that is a quality that Doug and I breed for, is a rabbit that sits there and just has that look at me, pick me attitude. Um, there's something that I call jiggling jaws, and, and it's a good thing. Um, it, it scares some people, but when you're posing a rabbit, you'll notice that the bottom jaw will start to vibrate. And it isn't grinding teeth. It isn't something that, he, that they're, they're going to bite. It is a relaxation thing. It's something that they, it's just something I've learned from our rabbits and others that once the rabbit is comfortable and, and relaxed, you'll, you'll see those jaws jiggling. So if you see that, don't be afraid of it. It's a good thing. Um, be firm and deliberate. We talked about this already. Um, petites hate to be tickled. Um, you need to, you want to get in there and you want to hold the rabbit. You don't want to dig with your fingernails, obviously. But if you're having real light hands and you're, you're fussing with the rabbit, no, that leg isn't quite right, and, and you, you're fussing, you're going to get bitten. Um, they just, they don't like it. Don't waste their time. <laughs> um, and also learn the difference between fear and aggression. True aggression, I think, is really rare. Um, I've, I've, I've judged it. Um, they don't stick around in our barn, but um, we find the ones that tend to be snappish or nippy, it's generally either fear or frustration. So there is a difference. Um, and then Britannia Petites will reflect your attitude more than most breeds. If you're really nervous, the rabbit gets nervous. If you um, are overbearing, they'll fight back more. Yep, if you get really grabby, Yep. Oh yeah, they're gonna fight. They're gonna kick. Um, it, it's a. It, this is one of the things that if you can visit with someone that has petites and get your hands on them and really learn more about them, um, it it can be helpful. And sometimes in the middle of judging your class of them, working with them, you have to put them back in the box, the judging box, and take a deep breath and then go back to them because mm -hmm. they can feel you mm -hmm. and they will reflect it more than most breeds. And I can't tell you, you know, how difficult it is as a judge, and I know that Terry can relate to this too, that when you have a beautiful rabbit, you know by touching it that it is, it is of high quality, but the rabbit will not sit still. And I don't care what breed it is, but you know that this rabbit is a good one, but it just won't settle. And it's, it's heartbreaking as a judge. And, and with the petites, it's the same thing. If you looked at that rabbit in the coop and you, you went, wow, that's a nice one. You pulled it out. Your first impression was good, but then the rabbit flipped. Then you need to put the rabbit away and come back later. Because nine times out of 10, your first impression is the right one. Um, and you need to give that rabbit a, a second to chill out and come back. And that's true of all breeds. Don't, don't get me wrong. I think that's only fair. Next slide, please. Um, these are just some judging tips from when Doug and I used to coach uh, judging teams. Um, when you have your class of four sitting in front of you, of petites, what's your first impression from the judging coop? There's 30 points looking at you from that judging coop. You know, is the head wedgy? Are the ears on top? Are the ears well furred? Are the eyes large? Um, is the rabbit, you know, sitting naturally in an upright position in the coop? Or is it cowering with its ears, you know, coming off the back of its head and, and with little squinty eyes? You know, that first impression, there's a lot of points involved with that with petites when they're looking at you. Um, and we used to tell our kids, you know, you've got four rabbits to, to pick from. From your first impression, who's your favorite? That will be your number one in your mind at this point. And then who's the one that you just sort of think, eh, no, no thanks. He'll be at the bottom. Um, so just try and make it a little easier on yourself instead of overwhelming yourself with these first, these four bunnies in front of you all at once. Um, just another reminder to not get grabby. Remember that they're visual, um, that they, when you, they see that hand coming at them to pull them out of the coop, it is one of the, you need to be most careful of yourself um, at that point um, when you're taking them out of the coop because they just don't appreciate that hand coming right at 
them from on top. Try and reach in from the side and scoop them out. Um, and be quick, don't mess around. Get in, get out. Um, and then I just said, well, if, if Dracula has shown himself, um, don't worry too much about it. Um, just keep your hands away from his mouth, your fingers away from his mouth, um, and come back to him if you feel like he's just fearful. Um, this next thing is something that I talk about um, when I'm talking to new breeders and working with posing. It's called containing the crazy because some of these rabbits can be pretty wound up and you have to be able to channel that energy. And if you do, it oftentimes brings brilliance out of the rabbit because once the rabbit realizes that the energy needs to come up and out the top of the head and out the ears, the rabbit comes up. It's, a, it's an odd concept for me to describe, but it is the truth. And when you can manipulate that animal enough to sit still and channel that energy up into the front end, it, it all comes together. Um, if the rabbit is just wigging out and won't work with you, put him away, take a deep breath, move to the next bunny. Um, and then come back. It's all, I think it's always fair to give an animal a second chance. Um, and, and, and oftentimes the animal will settle in and, and you'll be okay. Um, we talked about this earlier. Um, if you're not sure, if you're stuck in your class, um, go back to your first impression. And, and that one is almost always correct. Next slide, please. Oh, okay. That's the end. <laughs> if there are any questions, I mean, I will be happy to have Terry address those and then I can work with this bunny a little bit and we can, you know, I can show you the different handling techniques. Take it away, Terry. Hey, I'm back. <clears throat> is, uh, <clears throat> is there, when you're, uh, when you're calling your uh, petites out or judging, is there any one disqualification that maybe is a little more prominent you have to keep an eye out for? No, because we do all white. <laughs> that takes care of the color issues. Um, no, they have good teeth because we're not doing a crunched in head. Um, broken toenails would probably be the one thing we have to watch the most because these are more excitable, more alert animals they are more likely to have a broken toenail than a lot of, or toe, I mean, broken toe, broken toe mm -hmm. than a lot of other breeds. Because um, they are a fine bone rabbit who's alert and up and bouncing and going, they will break a toe more than most. Yep. Yep. And that certainly makes um, sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're actually surprisingly durable. I'm amazed at how alert they can be and no broken backs. I've had a broken leg. Um, the convention setting can be really um, hard on them, but uh, yeah, the toes definitely. And then just watch for the dewlaps, you guys. We can't have a dewlap in a petite. Um, as they get stale or they get older, um, a lot of times the does are going to start to get a little fluffy. Okay. Uh, do you see very often dwarfs, I mean the uh, Britannia petites going overweight very often? Hmm. We don't, but we breed for a much <clears throat> good bone, that finer bone, and a shorter rabbit. We really don't, even our brood does, don't seem to go over. Same with the ears. I mean, the ears, the DQ is two and three quarters inches, and I, I don't know that we've ever had one that's been that long. I mean, that is obnoxiously long. <laughs> yeah, it's quite, quite ugly. They, yeah, they I mean, go for pets pretty quick. <laughs> Get Not that. the definition of balance. <laughs> well, uh, Amanda, do you have any questions coming in on your end from the uh, from the audience? No, not yet. I just have lots of thank yous um, from some judges up in Michigan and Ohio. We've had some people on here that have watched in from Pennsylvania, Florida, North Carolina, Ohio, Michigan. I even had one in there that I'm not even going to try to pronounce the. Um, province that it's in, um, but he's from the Netherlands. Uh, and then I had Ontario pop in there as well, giving a shout out. Good. Awesome. Good. And then there's um, a thank you on here for 
This is a lot of valuable information for us new breeders. Thank you very much. Good. Yes, my pleasure. And I will say, you know, that petites, they're not for everybody. Um, and you're either going to love them or you're going to hate them. And it, it isn't about the aggression either. They're very challenging to raise. Um, but they're just, they are a trick. They're a ton of fun. I love to sell petites to kids that do, um, that want to do showmanship or hopping. Because you get a kid that loves to work with a rabbit. I kid you not, a petite trained by a kid will sit like a rock. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. And then there's also, with everyone interested in the hoppers, um, we've had quite a few bunnies um, go to hopping homes. And, and it's, it's really fun to watch. We enjoy it. I, it's been fun to watch that um, part of our hobby kind of take off. Um, definitely. But I can grab this bunny here and we can try and <coughs> get him in the frame if you want. Okay. Um, sure thing. I, can, I wanted to wear a black apron so that you guys could kind of see the rabbit from the side. All right. This is a senior doe, so she's, you know, easy to do the, the shoulder posing. She readily does it. She also, if you look at her, she's putting all her weight into her hindquarters, which is what I want. If she has all her weight back here, then she's much lighter up front. Now here, I'm not sure, I think you can see. I will use my hands like this, judging. I do this with howl knots sometimes too, to kind of guide. guide and sort of restrain without putting my hand on the rabbit's head. Um, kind of blocking the vision is very helpful. And patting the ears up. Helps. Yes, I wanna show you one thing. When I have young people help me show the rabbits, um, a lot of times they want to pet the rabbits like this, and we strongly discourage that. So when you're judging, this doe appears to have really poor ear carriage, but all it takes is touching the backs of the ears. And this is another technique that works to calm, calm the petites. I know it sounds crazy. I didn't believe it until I started using it myself. They love this. And, and if you're trying to get your rabbit to sit still, that oftentimes, I'm ho I was kind of hoping she would jiggle her jaws a little bit. Let's see. If I see it, I'll, I'll point it out. Here. But um, so using your hand here is very helpful. Also getting comfortable with posing the rabbit into you. It stops the forward energy from going this way and it forces the energy that way. So also all feet in all four corners, you guys. See how I have this rabbit's hindquarters? I'm putting them down, her heels down. Petites also love to be pet, pet rather firmly. Um, they, they know you're there. It's not this whole tickling thing where you're trying to do this and poking and prodding. Um, really getting in there and being firm, they appreciate that because they know you're there. So all four feet in all four corners. So you set the hind feet down. You can even pull the feet back. I do that with all breeds of rabbits to get these hocks back here. I don't want that, okay? So I'll pull these feet back really light on the front. And see where my fingers are? I, you know, she's not a biter. But so that's your shoulder lift. You can do the chin lift this way. My hand is at the base of the neck here and under her chin and I'm lifting. Yes, you're in jeopardy of being bitten but um, it is helpful with the young bunnies. And then the praying hands is one of my favorites personally when I'm training rabbits at home because it allows me to force the rabbit back. I, I, can, I can put my finger, this finger right here, right underneath, set her down so that her weight is back here. <laughs> Just trying to get across the point of um, the weight in the hindquarters. So also trying to get them as tall as possible and then, you know, that coat should just be really tight, you guys, there. So how she sat back, that's as, that's as good as I can get her to look. And then if you want to get those ears together, it's just a matter of doing that. So it, it's one of those 
last little touches when you're getting a final evaluation. It's just like petting the fur when you're really looking at it. I tend to cup the ears a little. I can hear her jiggling her jaws. It's just, they, it's a comfort thing, I think, or I've learned. And once you get them set up, look quick, appreciate them, and put them back. <laughs> yep. Because there is a limit time-wise for how long they're going to put up with you. And you have to remember, if they're built right, you can set them up right. Yep. If, they're, if they don't have the leg, or if they don't have the front end, they just kind of lay down on the table. That might just be the way they're built. It's not your judging. It's not your posing. Some animals are just not structured to the standard that we want. Right. So don't feel bad if you can't get all 10, ten roosting your bucks to sit right. Because right. three of them might not have the front end, might not have the ears on the top of their head. Right. It's not always the judging. Sometimes yeah. animals are just not built to our standard. Yeah. Yeah. They'll sharpen your reflexes, you guys. I mean, I've, I've seen rabbits be sitting perfectly perfect and then launch over the judge's shoulder and be in the next county in two seconds. I mean, they are fast. They hit the ground and they run. They have no sense of self-preservation. They'll, I could put a dwarf on this table and it would sit here for a week. It wouldn't go anywhere. You put this rabbit, she's just about done. You can see where she's starting to crawl up the front of me and she's done, you know, I, we're done. <laughs> Had enough of this. But um, if there are any other questions, I'm trying to think of anything that I, um, you see how alert this animal is. This is something we look for in our babies and our juniors when we watch them in their coops and cages. The ones that come up and see what you're doing. The ones that watch you sit up in their cage. They're interested. They're are interested. alert mm -hmm. and attentive. Are usually our best show rabbits and our best breeding rabbits. And we, we love those. Yep. The ones who hide under the feeder, hide in the back corner, hide in the nest box usually don't turn into good show rabbits and that is genetic that personality that, that attitude is what we're looking for and something you can select for yep absolutely the scaredy cats i don't keep the scaredy cats i also i don't breed a lot of crazy rabbits um i don't keep aggressive ones at all the ones that are truly mean where you reach in the cage and they are launching at you i don't tolerate it at all i just don't i don't want to be bitten this is my hobby we, you know, we do this for fun. We don't do this to be frustrated. So we've learned that you can work around it by selecting some different personality traits and having that more alert, interested individual, I will keep all day long. I would rather contain the crazy than try to bring out alertness. It's almost impossible. I can contain the crazy. It takes a little more time, but to try and teach a rabbit to be confident and alert is nearly impossible. So um, the crazy guys, they're not mean. I have two crazy bucks right now. I just don't breed crazy to crazy. Um, but no aggressive. We right. do not breed aggressive mm -hmm. because we are representing the breed and we are not gonna. And you are gonna come across some snappish ones, you guys. It's just, it's in our standard. They allow for it. But I've just learned, and Doug and I have learned that you're not gonna win if the, if if the judge is dodging your rabbit, trying to keep, you know, from being bitten, you're not, you're not gonna, I mean, I, you, you can still win and do well and be a good judge by having just what I would call an alert rabbit. All right. Um, we have a few I think that's about all I got. We have a few questions. Okay. They actually right. go hand in hand with each other. Um, so I'll ask them both at the same time for you. It says here, do you feel working with them at an early age, are they less aggressive? And how old are your young rabbits when you begin working with them? Um, hang on just one second, let me. So the question was, how old are the babies when we start working with them? Yes. And how much do we feel? And then do you feel working with them at a younger age, are they less aggressive? Um, you guys aren't gonna like this answer very much. I very, I don't work with my rabbits much at all. For um, posing. For posing. Um, I think what we have encouraged with our bonnies is, and this is the dwarfs too, is um, 
they need to be still. Um, generally, if the type is correct, if they're structurally correct, after just a couple of short posing sessions, guys, I'm like five minutes. Um, their little brains just fry after working for five minutes. And we are not going to train them to be something they're not. Right. I mean, they breed true that way. They present themselves and all the judges can set them up correctly if they are correct. Yeah. And you can also, you could train a baked potato to look like, <laughs> like a petite if you worked hard enough at it. I'm just not willing to put that kind of effort into it. Um, pretty is as pretty does. And if you can teach that pretty animal to be still, um, I think you're really ahead of the game. And I would say when I first start pulling bunnies out, you know, they get weaned at eight weeks or so. Um, I'm at that point culling. If there's anything ugly, it goes then. Um, but I sit on my petites quite a long time um, because uh, they're very active in their cages. We give our petites pretty large cages. They use that, those, that space. They really do. And having that space and being able to bang, bang around in their cages and have something to do. I have old ceramic crocs that, you know, they sit on and, and there are wiffle balls in there for them. I mean, I'm the first one to admit, I never thought I would give my rabbits toys, but these rabbits need something to do. And in doing those things, they show you their type and they do change quite a bit. Their head and ears really develop and that, and then when the head develops, it changes the eye a little bit. Yeah, it does. Um, but a short rabbit usually stays short all the way. One that sits up the front end usually sits up all the way, but the depth over the hip will change. Mm -hmm. um, the roundness on the profile will change. Yep. But um, you know, long rabbits don't get short, the obvious thing. Mm -hmm. And you can really evaluate the bone in their cage. Um, or even in the judging box. Right. The bunny is coming up the front of the cage. And I mean, those feet are right there. And you'll notice right away the, the hooves will be climbing up the front. And you'll see those big fuzzy paws coming at you. But the petites, you know, the ones that have the more correct bone in their cages, it's just let yourself learn at home with them in the cages. I, I've learned so much by just sitting on bunnies and watching. Um, it, 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 if, you're, if you're a breeder, that's my best advice. Don't throw them away too quickly. Um, if you're seeing glaring faults, um, you know, really chopped, uh, really short in the front leg, long in the ears, any of that sort of stuff, mm -mm. Nope, I don't keep uh, brood bucks, some people call them, um, big bucks to, deal with tiny ears. I, Doug and I don't get tiny ears very often. I, I'm One thing I love about this breed, they're pretty darn consistent yep. when it comes to litters. Um, it's, a, it's a welcome relief as a dwarf breeder. Um, I enjoy that. Um, and I didn't mention it earlier, but there are eight varieties of uh, Britannia Petites in the U.S. Uh, now our newest one is a Siamese Sable. So lots of colors to choose from. We have a question here. It's um, how many is a good herd for Brits? Uh, well, yeah. we say this in all breeds. Keep your varieties narrowed down so they work together. Don't have shaded and chestnut and you know, different things like that. Um, we've seen people be very competitive with 20 total coops and just working through that and staying smaller you call better you get more consistent um you don't breed things just because they had good parents you actually breed good rabbits um, and this is true across a lot of different breeds but with the brits you kind of need a few extra does because tiny litters. tiny litters not always easy cuddling peanuts, peanuts um and then if you do get into colors, you have to clean up your colors and do different things that way. But 20 yeah. total coops, you can be very competitive. We know some very good breeders nationally that can do it with very small rabbit trees. Mm -hmm. cool. Anything else, Amanda? The luxury 
Okay. I think it's really nice to have grow out cages. You know, if, if 20 is your core breeding herd, that's great. But if you've got cages to sit on those youngsters and just watch, um, I think that's a really nice luxury, definitely. Okay. Amanda, anything else? That's what all I've got as of right this moment. <laughs> all righty. Yeah. Well, thanks, Terry. We really appreciate you yeah. inviting us to do this. We love to share. Well, Molly and Doug, I really wanted to see this breed presented, and I thought of you guys, and I really appreciate you guys uh, stepping up and getting with us here this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Our pleasure. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. I'm really happy to have you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Bye, guys. Well, often every time now, from now, whenever I do uh, Brittany Petites, and I th I'll think of a uh, baked potato now, thanks to you, Molly, what you said a while ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> well, friends, uh, I thank everybody for joining us this morning and taking in this uh, this uh, workshop with us. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, please join us to see Brock Meaner of Pennsylvania talk on English Lops. Uh, I've seen him have some good ones over the years, and I'm sure he's got a lot of information to uh, pass on to us. Uh, if you'd like to take a view of uh, this video we just did today or some of the earlier ones, uh, please remember to check out our D8 YouTube channel, and that's at ARBA D8 website. That's three different words, ARBA D8 website. And shortly, Amanda will have this video up. We've got the earlier virtual workshops there, as well as uh, several from our live ones at the uh, shows last fall. And for our folks who's watching this, who may not be a member of the ARBA yet, we definitely invite you to join us. Just visit the ARBA website at arba.net and you can join there. You'll get a, a bi-monthly, really good uh, magazine called Domestic Rabbits. You'll get a guidebook and you just have a chance to reach out and uh, communicate with a bunch of people when you do that. So with that, uh, I just wanna say thanks again to Doug and Molly. Uh, thanks to Amanda at the Control Center. She's put a lot of extra time doing this. I want to say thank you to uh, Jane Burt for cranking out those awesome uh, flyers promoting these events. And I want to thank you guys watching these. Uh, that's why we do them for. So with that, I'll say goodbye and see you tomorrow.